Welcome to the Gen Explainers Podcast, Part 2 of the B-52s. Today we'll be ranking their albums and choosing our top three tracks from each one. So now that we've discussed all the albums, let's rank them. Um, who wants to start? But maybe, should, should Mike start? Sure. You want to start? Please. All right, so there, there are, as we <laughs> discussed, uh, eight releases that we're considering, including Mesopotamia EP. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I don't think this uh, lowest ranking is going to be too much of a surprise, but let's, let's start. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to say good stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you want to expound? So, yeah, I, I just think it's the... Uh, I mean, we talked a little bit about why. Yeah, I think it's the least listenable album to me. <laughs> it's basically, that's, that's my ranking. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking about the songs on the album, my top three, if I had to pick some, <laughs> which I have to, apparently, um, I would put um, number three, probably good stuff. Number two, uh, is that you, Modine? And then Hot Pants Explosion is number one. As o- well. Only only, only because I think Hot Pants Explosion is the closest to a B-52 song on the entire album. Yeah. Um, and for me. I mean, it's just the only one that really uh, reminds me of anything else on their other albums. Sure. Most B-52-ish. All right, cool. How about you, Al? What's your lowest ranking? I thought we were going to go youngest to oldest. <clears throat> so I'll go next. <laughs> My number eight is good stuff as well. It it is not good. I mean, when I say that, I obviously I'm comparing it to other B52s albums. It is definitely the the least of their albums. Objectively, if I had you know didn't know anything about the B52s, and I sat down and listened to this album, I would say. Eh, kind of interesting, but I don't know if I ever need to hear this again. Um, but yeah, that's at the bottom, and the three songs I chose, if you had, if someone pulled the gun on you and said, listen to three songs from Good Stuff, happens more than you think, I would choose, I didn't rank them, I'm just going to say the songs. So, Good Stuff, uh, Tell It Like It, T.I. Is, and I actually chose Revolution Earth, oddly. Um, and I have in my notes, it's really hard to choose a third song, especially since the songs are equally middling. <laughs> um, it, it was very hard to choose because I, 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 yeah, I feel just blah kind of about the whole, the whole business. Uh, good stuff is also my number eight. So I think we're all in accord on this. It's, uh, you know, and again, it, it's well produced. They put effort into it. It's but it's just, I don't ever want to listen to it again, and I won't. Like, once this show is over, I'm done. Uh, my songs are a little bit different than y'all's. Uh, my number three is The World's Green Laughter, mm. which it's, I again, I don't really think the song works, but it's different and interesting to me. And so I, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, my number two is Revolution Earth, it again it's a very conventional type song but it sounds good and my uh number one from that is is that you modine i again yeah. it captures a little bit of that flavor that b-52's flavor yeah For me, it's better than Hot Pants Explosion because Hot Pants Explosion to me sounds a little forced, a little like, oh, we have to sound like the B-52s. Uh-huh. Like, it's, it's almost like a parody, almost. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Mike, sorry. Mike, what is your number seven? Uh, it would be Fun Flex um, mm. is my number seven. Um, and uh, thinking about the songs on it, uh, you know, I, I'm not as familiar with them as I would like to be, but... Probably my number three song would be Deviant Ingredient. Uh, my number two song, possibly Ultraviolet. But I actually, my number one song on that, I actually like Love in the Year 3000. 
Mm-hmm. I really like that song. Yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought it was a well done song. And if, it, if, if there were a fourth on here, I would probably put Funplex up there too because I really did enjoy that song too. So. It could, that goes to what you were saying about this album went a little bit back to more of the subject matter that they used to yeah. sing about. Like, In Love in the Year 3000 is very much a type of song that they would do early, yeah. in the early, earlier days. It reminded me of the Bouncy of Satellite days. It, mm-hmm. it reminded me a lot of that time frame. My number seven is actually Mesopotamia, the EP. Um, again, I feel like the direction they were going is an interesting, but it didn't feel very b 52 z um, And Alan mentioned that like he had a song, he had a, a recording that he recorded four songs from the six songs, and thought it was pretty darn good. But you know, I, I had all six, so I <laughs> I heard them all. So again, it was partly. Objectively, now when I look at it, I, I think it this is where it ranks for me in enjoyment. And certainly at the time, I think I pretty much only liked Mesopotamia. I think I liked that song, and then it was like the other ones were eh, okay, and it was a little disappointing. Um, I think the best songs are um, Throw That Beat in the Garbage Can, would probably be the third, number three. Uh, number two would probably be Cake, and the best song I think is Mesopotamia, which I think is as good as some of their best songs, actually. I really think Mesopotamia is a pretty good song. Al? Uh, my number seven is, uh, like Mike, I picked Funplex. Um, I, it, to me, it's lower than Mesopotamia because there is a, a, one song on Mesopotamia that I just love. And Funplex, better than good stuff, definitely capturing more of their spirit while still, you know, allowing them to evolve and sound different than they used to when they were younger. The three songs that I chose are number three would be Juliet of the Spirits, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And number two would be Deviant Ingredient. Mainly because I love hearing Fred Schneider say delirious. <laughs> and if I could just vote for that, then I think it would just be number one. That him saying delirious. <laughs> and he doesn't say it quite as often as he ought to on mm. that song. I love Fred Schneider. Delirious. And number one for me was Pump. I really liked Pump. It's a great way to start the record. It really got, it got me excited. You know, after having listened to good stuff, I was like, oh, wow, this this album's actually going to be decent. Yeah. So that's my number seven. Good choice. All right, uh, number six. Well, my number six is Mesopotamia. Only, I mean, I just think it was uh, not exactly the most consistent, al- not very consistent as an album. It you know, it was felt incomplete, and we know the story behind, like, it was supposed to originally be the uh, full album, stuff like that, but um, it just, there was, I, I didn't like everything on it, and just felt, you know, whatever, but if I were to put top three songs out of six, I guess I'm 50% of the album, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I'd probably go uh, number three, uh, Nip It in the Bud, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, number three, Throw That Beat in the Garbage Can, then Cake, then Mesopotamia. Yeah, same as mine. Is it, okay, I, I didn't remember the order of yours. <laughs> All right, my number six is Whammy. You might think it should be higher. As I get to these later ones, they're very close. But I picked Whammy. Um, I think when it, when it came out, I actually really liked this album. Um, listening to them now in the order of release... This album is actually kind of a letdown. Now I like I like the album. Don't get me wrong, but it, the, the sort of the more keyboards and drum machiney feel, I ate it up when I was younger, and now I'm like, yeah, I'm missing something from that. Even though I still dig it. Okay, um, I think the best songs, if I you know, the best three songs, I'd say number three, Queen of Las Vegas, I actually like, uh, and then Legal Tender, which was their big single and then my favorite one is actually a song for a future generation just because it's again i think the memory of it for me is very strong like i think i'll mention he saw the first b52's music video he saw was this one right mm-hmm. um and i just love their little bios and what they like and it's very b52's to do that and it's fun and it's awesome so those are my three 
All right, uh, my number six, uh, very similar to Mike's. Mm -hmm. Little pattern here, I'm just cribbing off of your homework, uh, is Mesopotamia. Uh, it's, I mean, just for, it's shorter, so it can't really be, you know, even if it was all great, it couldn't be that great. Uh, and just uh, for trivia, the two songs that I did not record and did not remember were even on that record were Loveland and Deep Sleep, because I didn't like them. <laughs> Those are probably the two that I liked the least. Yeah. So I thought it was a four-song EP of Mesopotamia, Cake, Throw That Beat in the Garbage Can, and Nip It in the Bud. Pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Much, much better. Uh, my top three songs of the four are uh, Cake is my number three. Mesopotamia is my number two because I love... Love, love, nip it in the bud. Mm, yeah, that's one of my favorite B fifty two songs. Cool. So, quick note on Mesopotamia, um, if you're looking for it, um, it actually was released not only alone but also paired, at least back in CD days. It was released with something called Party Mix, which mm, was yeah. remixes of songs from their first <clears throat> two albums, and it's actually fantastic. And I listened to that a lot at the time. I, I think again I had the cassette or something. Um, great remixes, 52 Girls, uh, just Party Out of Bounds, just they added a lot of fun to it. I know we ranked Mesopotamia kind of low, but maybe just uh, check it out because it's often paired with something uh, fun remix. Ha having those two together is actually really good. It yeah. makes sense, yeah. and it's actually smart. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right, we're at number five, Mike. Well, my number five is Whammy, so we're Whammy again. Um, and uh, I like it a little bit more than you did, and as you as you said, getting to these older albums, it's, it's, it is it becomes like just really uh, random reasons in this particular case I think that there were this was an album that probably was a few songs too long because those songs just weren't that strong um, mm -hmm. uh, so if it had been a shorter album with a fewer, fewer songs and focused on just the strongest songs then it probably would have been higher up on my list um, but my three songs from the album um, are Legal Tender my third then Whammy Kiss, I really like a lot, except I think it's it should be a shorter song. It's five minutes long, which <laughs> five and a half minutes long, probably. And then Song for a Future Generation is my number one. So, mm -hmm. cool. Um, I wonder if they if they had taken maybe the best songs from Mesopotamia and maybe reworked them for the feel of Whammy, and then got rid of some of those filler songs you're, you're talking about. I wonder if it would have been a stronger album, or maybe that would have been not so great. I don't know. Just an idea. Maybe getting that time machine you can give him a put a bug in there. Here. Anyway, my five is Funplex. Um, I liked it more than you guys did, and I think one of the reasons is again, listening to them in order, hearing you know, hearing good stuff, and being like, "Ugh, boy, this is uh, not good." And then having not heard Funplex either, I say, "Okay, well, we'll see what this is." I mean. I don't want it to be a cringy, you know, look at this old band trying to recapture something. But I really enjoyed it, actually. I, I th it felt like how the album should be, sort of the, appropriate for where they're at in their career or, or musically appropriate for them. It had the right, you know, Cindy was back. Um, it had that stuff that I love, that harmonies and the, and the interplay between the vocals. And Fred was back a little bit more Fred-like. <laughs> so I really enjoy. I actually really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Uh, my songs, um, I guess number three would be Eyes Wide Open. Um, my number two would probably be Funplex. I really enjoyed that. And my number one is Pump. Again, it, it's maybe it's because like where it was in my listening order. 
it's like, oh, okay, this is this is gonna be better than I thought, kind of thing. But I do enjoy that song a lot. So yeah, that's my number five. All right. Well, my number five is going to be a real deviation, I think, from y'all's. Uh, my number five is Cosmic Thing. Ooh. It. Uh, I know it's weird to say that because it has literally their biggest hits commercially anyway. But for me, again, it's that beginning of being a little more conventional in their songwriting. And there are a, there are a lot of good songs on this album that I just don't really choose to listen to them. And so that makes a big difference for me. And uh, my top three songs from this are probably... Number three I have as Cosmic Thing, the song. My number two is Love Shack, because even though I'm really tired of hearing it, it is objectively a very good song. And, and so fun and festive. And there's a reason why it's played at all these weddings. And my number one is June Bug, which I really love that song so much. I lo- and I think the ending, the last half of that song, is as good as almost any other uh, B-52 song there is. Number four? Ron, number four? Yeah, well, this is number four. So, right. so your number five is my number four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Cosmic Thing is my number four. Um, and uh, I like the, that they had this big comeback. It was great for them. Uh, all, they gained a wider audience, which they absolutely 100% deserved. Um, I think uh, probably it ranked a little bit lower than some of the others uh, only because of the fact that it was more conventional it was more uh, poppy um, and more radio friendly I guess is the term they like using than their other stuff and I do tend to at the, at least at the time when I first heard it shy away from that although I still love the album so uh, my top three actually my third one is Junebug um, my second actually is Rome and my top one is Cosmic Thing um, mm. and I like Love Shack I just it, I can't put on my top three <laughs> so I, I get it alright my number four and stay tuned for perhaps some audible gasps no uh, my number four is Bouncing Off the Satellites uh, this, again, these ones are very close, but I think I, I'm going to choose 1986's Bouncing Off the Satellites. Um, I think, Al, you mentioned it sort of felt like a less unified group of songs. It felt like you felt that there were different people bringing in mm-hmm. material, perhaps. And again, not a bad thing, necessarily. Um, but maybe it felt a little uneven or something. But but again, still really love the album. Um the songwriting, again, a little more mature and the complex, the arrangement a little more complex and the production was heavier, but it was a good direction to be going into. And uh, my three songs, which yeah, I'm looking at it now, I feel like I want to change it, but I'm going to stick with it. Number three, I have She Breaks for Rainbows, which I, I don't know. I don't why I like that song. Part of me doesn't like it, but I really do like it. I don't know how I can explain this. It's like when I listen to the album and look at the other songs, I go, I don't know if that one cuts it. But then when I actually listen to it in my ears, I dig it. So I'm going with my ears. Um, number two, Girl from Ipanema Goes to Greenland. And the number one song on this album is Wig. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking Wig, man. Come on. Uh, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> so uh, my number four is also bouncing off the satellites. Uh, I don't... Uh, you know, at this point, and I should have said this for Cosmic Thing, the ranking feels weird just because I like, I love all of these albums at this yeah, point. Sure. So, 
And it was hard for me to leave Rome off of my list of top three yeah, songs. It's yeah. just, it's number four for me. Same, the same with me with Deadbeat Club, because I, I really, yeah. really appreciate that song a lot, even though sure. it's not my top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, my <clears throat> top three for Bouncing Off the Satellites is I have to give some props to Detour Through Your Mind. What is that song about? Why is he talking about a doctor <laughs> dipping them in plaster for $16,000? It's just weird enough to make me love it. <laughs> and my number two is Housework. It's a fun song. It's not... Uh, I just love the musical interlude in the middle with the, the drums and the guitar. Mm. And number one, what's that on your head? <laughs> a wig. A wig. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah, that's a great song. All right, so number three. Mike, what you got? Okay, well, my number three is Bounce Out the Satellites. <laughs> um, and... I understand what you guys said about you know it being uh, not consistent or what did you what was your I don't remember what you were disjointed disjointed a little bit, yeah. but for me each song is rather distinct and I like that they have different sounds throughout it too hmm. and that gives it more of a an, an energy that I can't really describe or explain it just is and that's why I like it because you go from something like Juicy Jungle over to Girl from Ipanema and then down to She Breaks for Rainbows and they all, they're all they very different songs even though they're still B-52's mm -hmm. songs. And so I, I, for some reason I just like that aspect of it. Yeah, you think the sort of evolution of, of their songwriting is a good thing. It's okay. Yeah. They're diverse. And, yeah, I, I agree with that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and they, were, they were searching to try to do different sounds which I actually really appreciated because it, it, it made for a more entertaining and listenable album for me. Mm. Anyway, my, my top three... Uh, number three actually is Girl from Ipanema. Uh, number two is Housework. Um, and number one, Wig. So, mm -hmm. no. I mean, it's like, it, 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 you can't make that <laughs> <laughs> anything less. Wig is a great, if you learn nothing from this particular show, folks, go out and listen to Wig. Come on. What's that on your head? A wig. What's that? I love the little, I love the wig talk breakdowns, mm -hmm. and in the middle it just goes to this little keyboard thing. <laughs> it's great, it's fun. So my number three is Cosmic Thing. Um, it was the yeah mainstream breakthrough. Uh, it was close with the previous with bouncing off the satellites for me, but I think just you know objectively looking at the album it has some really great songs on it, you know and. Uh, and I, yeah, I was very happy they had some mainstream success, big success for them. Um, ranking, you know, I I avoided Love Shack. Probably that's cheating, I know, but only because mm. it's so. I mean, I could I can listen to Love Shack in my head right now. I don't need to actually hear it. <laughs> and I could play the whole thing. Ten but, roof. <laughs> rusted. Now that being said, Love Shack's a great song, everybody, and you've heard it, so you know. But my number three on that album is Deadbeat Club. Um, my number two is Channel Z. I, I'm changing it. My number two isn't because <laughs> I'm I'm thinking about it in my head. I love Channel Z, and I think I more like it more than my actual number two, Rome. Rome is a great song, mm -hmm. um, but Channel Z is my favorite song on that album, and I think it has a little bit more of that quirky feel and I love the I love the vocal part when they go in the pre-chorus I'm trying to remember it here it goes well there's a guitar part that comes in at kind of an offbeat and it's really good when they when they do that and you know perhaps I'll play it when I edit it but <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great like bit and the drums are really good and it's the part that goes dun, 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 and then the drum kind of goes off an offbeat and then the guitar kind of comes in Anyway, 
anyway, those are my three songs. For that was my number three on my uh, ranking, Cosmic Thing. My number three album is their debut album, The B-52s. What? I know. Apostasy. Get the hell out of here. I'm already out. <laughs> You've checked out long ago. <laughs> I checked out life, my friend. Uh, it's a great record. Nothing against it. Um, it opens wonderfully with uh, Planet Claire, which is a great opening. great songs there's also some songs that i don't care as much for uh and so for me it's number three my number three song is there's a moon in the sky called the moon (laughs) yeah my number two song is of course the giant hit rock lobster which you can't get away from and my favorite song on that record is 52 girls Mm. good choices I don't know about the ranking, but good choices. Find it out after. <laughs> All right, so we're at we're at number two. All right, Mike. Number two for me would be their debut album. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, and I, I it it was very close between my top two albums. I mean, it's very close. Mm-hmm. It was really hard to choose, but I had to look at how many songs I liked on each one how many I'd like to listen to over and over again and so on. And even though my favorite of their songs, which we'll go over later is on this album, mm. it's still not my favorite as album, a whole, yeah, as, as a as whole. whole. Mm. Um, so anyway, so number three for me would be planet Claire. Uh, number two, rock lobster. And my number one would be dances mess around. Just, so many good ones. Just love that from. song so much. And when yeah. they do it live, it's spectacular. Well, my number two is their debut album, what the? and <laughs> and yeah, for uh, everything that's been discussed, it's uh, that's why I love it too. I, I think um, there are a few songs on there that that aren't as strong as the the standouts, obviously, like you know, eight six oh six oh eight four two and hero yeah. worship, hero, hero worship. Hero by the least. I almost forget about that song. Yeah, yeah, and. It's not that it's a bad song necessarily, but it's it's yeah. up against so many great mm-hmm. songs. Yeah. Uh, my my top three songs from the album, um, I chose Fifty Two Girls for three, Planet Claire for two, and I actually went ahead and did Rock Lobster because it. I'm sorry, yeah. it's undeniable. I, it's I a great song. Yeah. It's a party classic. I mean, again, it's probably their second most played after Love Shack, as far as like hearing it, like you know. But I. Uh, I, I, it's a great song. I love the song. So, yeah. Uh, my number two is Whammy. Wow. I love Whammy. Okay. And I, not sure if my friendship with the two of you can hold, <laughs> considering how low you placed it. But you know what? People are different, and we should celebrate the differences and not uh, demand conformity. Hey, just think if we had said good stuff as our number one. Then I would have. That's a deal breaker. Yeah, yes, see, okay. that would have. So just be happy with I that. I would question everything. <laughs> Do I even know you? <laughs> um, I love Whammy. I love the whole crazy record. Um, I didn't know what I had when I bought it. I had. I bought it when it first came out. Um, and I had. You know, the original track listing had that song, Don't Worry, which is a cover of a Yoko Ono song. Oh. 
But the, didn't know no, that. I did not know that. Yeah. And there was a licensing issue. I don't know if Yoko Ono didn't agree to it or, you know, I don't know if it was a corporate thing, but uh, they had to pull it off that record. Mm. So subsequent releases of that album don't have that, and it has a different version of There's a Moon in the Sky. And I think it's called, like, Moon 83. Moon 83. I had the first album with the Don't Worry mm. cover, and when I did what I think we probably all did is converted my albums to CDs and like albums take up so much room and I got rid of it and oh, then I was like wow. wait a minute this CD doesn't have that song don't worry that Ouch. I love that's too bad yeah so then you know my girlfriend got me a record player for Christmas mm. and I hunted it down and I bought <laughs> nice an original version with don't worry on it nice all right don't I will say about the album and this connects to bouncing off the satellites as well I think on both of these records they are trying to just experiment more and be different they have their their view of art and their view of music and they want to be fun and everything but they're trying to spread it beyond just uh, Wild Planet and, mm -hmm. and the debut album and I think they go in some really interesting directions I love Big Bird I'll listen, to, I'll listen to this record yeah. all the way through anytime. For, for me, there are no bad songs on this record. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned, like, when I initially heard it when, I, when it came out or when I was younger, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot more, but, but I didn't like the second end, the second half right. of it, maybe. Um, hearing Big Bird specifically recently, I'm like, oh, this is actually a really fun, good song, but yeah. it's still, it dropped where it dropped. <laughs> for you. For me. Yeah. And again, that being said, other than the bottom one for us, they're all pretty good. I mean, yeah. again, it's sort of like, here's this, and then they're all kind of bunched up near the top, you know? They're, it's quality stuff. Yeah. But, so that was your number... That's my number two, two, and my three songs yeah. from it are... My number three song is uh, Legal Tender, which was the, the first uh, release, and a good song, very good song. And my number two is Whammy Kiss, yep. where I feel like on Whammy Kiss, despite its length, Mike, yeah. is Fred Schneider being his most Fred Schneider, yeah, and I yeah. love it. That's true. Give it to me, give it to me, give <laughs> right. it to me. Uh, when I get home. <laughs> and my number one is Song for a Future Generation. That is a great, mean, great song. Play that song at my funeral. <laughs> okay. And also Noted. because I am Cindy. And I'm a Pisces, and I love Chihuahuas and Chinese noodles. noodles yes. <laughs> okay, well that brings us to number one, and it's going to be the same. And it's going to be the same, same for all of us. So, yeah. Well, why don't we just say, okay, everybody, the number one is Wild Planet. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Why is number? Why is it for number one for you? It, it's basically there's. Like you just said about Whammy, it's just not a bad song on the album for me. It just, I could listen to it again and again and again and never get tired of it. It's like, I can't even, it, it's even hard for me to pick my top three songs. It is hard. Yeah. It's very hard. It was easy for me to try to figure out what my least favorite was, and I think it might be, um, well, Dirty Back Road's pretty good, but. Um, Mine's, my, my least my favorite is 53 Miles West of Venus. That's my least favorite. I guess that's kind of a throwaway ish, kind of just, but it's still good. Is it? That's the thing. Is it? Well, it's good. I mean, it is good. Okay, I, you're They're probably going to say good. running around. <laughs> running around. Yeah. For me, I think running around might be the least. Okay. Of it. Yeah, that was my second least favorite. But it's a great favorite. song. It's a really good yeah. song. Yeah. But anyway, but yeah, no, I, I, I listen to both songs, and I love both songs still. So it's it's not like I'm saying they're bad songs. Exactly. It's just... But my... Okay, if I have to pick a top three, you do. if I really have to... Yes, you do. <sighs> it's probably going to be Strobe Light, number three. Number two, uh, probably Give Me Back My Man. And then number one, Quiche Lorraine. But that, mm. again, it's like Quiche Lorraine, Give Me Back My Man. That, it's, the, the, those two are like top, the top for me. Yeah. So yeah. it's really hard to pick between those two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, strong. My, my three, again, just generally speaking, this album, very close to their debut, about how I feel about it. But I think this one, like you said, 
strong throughout. You know, the weakest song is still really good. Um, ranking the three best is hard. I have to say, number three, I guess, would be "Devil in My Car," which I love. Um, I think "Private Idaho" is a fantastic song. I, I might say, well, that's too popular. You know, again, my cheating. <laughs> it's not. Che- there's no rules. If you like it. I do like it, but I also... Okay. All right. So I guess Private Idaho, then. Okay, but you know, if you don't want to pick it, don't. Well, I do. Okay. But you. I don't. Okay. What I can tell you that the best song on the album, in my opinion, is Give Me Back My Man. Yeah. So there you go. Um, obviously, I picked it as my number one. It's a fantastic record. Oh, so good. And uh, my top three are... My number three is Give Me Back My Man. Uh, my number two is 53 Miles West of <laughs> Venus, motherfucker. Because <laughs> it's so fucking good. Yeah, it's good. It's Drive good. around with it. Listen to it. <laughs> Try it out. I don't think you're giving it a fair shake. <laughs> Number one, my all-time, well, we'll get into that later, but my all-time <laughs> favorite B-52 song is uh, Private Idaho. It, it's a great song. Mm-hmm. Well done. Well, you is know, it you, was... baby? <laughs> <laughs> I, those, those songs, Keish Lorraine and Strobe Light, yeah. Oh, yeah. figure so st- strongly in my, when I first listened to the album. I, yeah. Those were my absolute favorite songs. I love them. I still love them. Yeah. But I just think, like... Now I'm listening to it and sort of, I have, whatever, as an older guy, whatever, an older, mature, whatever. I still love them, but I'm like, but boy, this, you know, give me back my man. I'm listening for different things. I think I'm listening to the, I think the vocal performance mm-hmm. in that, she just, she, it, well, yeah, man, it, so good. And it, it, if you, in the music video, that, 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 it's like basically oh, the live, a live performance. Mm-hmm. I've it's, seen that. It's, it's a great video, it's too. Yeah. And just the, her dance and everything else yeah. that goes along with it, it's just really strong. That's, yeah, that's wrong. That's why I said it's hard. I, it's hard to pick my really top three because. <laughs> and, and the bottom line is, if you're out there and you you aren't familiar with the B52s, Wild Planet or the debut, just check it out. I mean, I don't see how you not like it. Quite honestly, oh, my kids don't care. Really? Yeah, I put it on. They're like, eh. Mm. Well, I guess you know, from my point of view, obviously, mm, they're kids. They're kids. It's not K-pop enough for mine. <laughs> It's what not, if you? What it's if not you? Lemon demon enough for my daughter, <laughs> and it's not Metallica enough for my son. <laughs> yeah. So okay, great. That I think our rankings. Well, you two had very similar rankings. Mine was a little mm-hmm. had a couple shifts, but generally speaking, Although certainly the top and the bottom. Whammy. That was the biggest change. My whammy is pretty low. And Mike's is well, and fifty-three miles apparently. It, it, <laughs> yeah, that was it. Doesn't mistake. matter how close we are together; just that that sh- that shut it all down. Well, let's, oh, well, there's, there's always now going to be a distance. <laughs> let's focus. Like well, we got to focus on what between us. Focus on what divides us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the American way, it Matthew. Is. So the B-52s, uh, as far as bands, in just generally speaking, uh, one of the one of the most fun, enjoyable bands ever, in my opinion. Very influential. For me, well, it it's sort of yeah. It's interesting because I I would not say that they were very influential to a lot of other bands, but and or nor that they uh, but they were influenced by a lot of bands, but they had their own sound, and you don't really hear anything else like them. And I think that made me made me realize, and then again, I mentioned Devo in the same kind of breath. 
they may realize that you can do this strange kind of music and it, yeah. it can be enjoyed you know it doesn't have to be 70s you know AOR you know and I shouldn't say they didn't influence other bands um uh, they probably did. It's just that they nobody else sounds like them. But yeah, you're no right. No one else no, sounds. They're like very the distinct kids. and unique. Yeah, they're their own thing. Yeah, it, it, and listening to the albums again in order, I was like, what a loss it was when Ricky Wilson passed. Yeah, he was yeah. such an interesting and uh, unique guitarist and musician. Yeah, and I do feel like the records changed at one, once he left. Now, or once yeah. he passed. just I, I may be wrong about this, but. Did he write most of the stuff from the first few albums? I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's possible. I think m- musically, he was definitely. I think a more had a heavier presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I think he and Keith Strickland worked on the music a lot together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I also know that uh, they were all playing instruments originally, except maybe I don't know if Fred Schneider was, but. Uh, as time moved on, they weren't. Yeah. They're mostly like singing. Yeah. Uh, although, I, I guess uh, Cindy really did a lot of keyboards later on, too. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, go Get out there. Check out B-52s. And I want to thank Mike and Al. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Bye. <laughs>Thank you for listening to this Gen Explainers podcast. Follow us on Instagram and friend us on Facebook. Just search for Gen Explainers. See you next time.